All right, welcome back. This is the NS-29 mission for New Shepard, the uh, 29th for the program and the 14th payload flight for New Shepard. Very exciting. Uh, we are in auto sequence right now as the vehicle is basically uh, taking over um, com command of itself. It's, a, it's becoming autonomous now. Yeah, and you can see right there from this view that bridge retracting from the capsule. Always a great sign that we're really close to launch. Uh, Let's stand by and watch these beautiful views from West Texas. And there are the aft fin checks. You can see those moving back and forth. We do that right before liftoff to make sure we can steer the vehicle on ascent and descent. We're coming up here at to T minus one minute and five seconds. The vehicle is coming alive. You can hear that. I know. It's incredible. The sounds of the launch pad. With a keen eye, you might be able to see that engine nozzle gimbling down there at the bottom. Yep, I see it. Hard to tell from this far, but beautiful views. All right, we're also keeping an eye on the pressures and temperatures in those propellant tanks. Both need to stay in that green zone, that go zone. All right, we're at T minus 30 seconds and counting. All right, Alice, well, here we go. It's uh, time to hand it off to mission control now and launch this rocket. G minus 16, guidance internal. And MT, we're going to go on this morning. All right. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Commanded to start. 2, 1. And lift off. Shepard is clear the tower, and heading to space. And you'll note the altitude and speed graphics that are appearing on the lower side of your screen there. Um, they are uh, tracking both vehicles together, specifically the, the crew capsule. Um, once we hit that moment of separation, it'll That's continue to track the crew capsule's speed. Now, the atmosphere, of course, is getting thinner and thinner as we, uh, as we approach space. 10,000 feet. BE3 at the moment is approaching 100% power level. Um, and next up, you're going to see max Q. This is the moment where the aerodynamic stress of the vehicle is on its maximum. As we do that, the BE3 engine is going to throttle back just a little bit as we pierce through the atmosphere. And we've passed max Q. So at this point, BE3 is back to 100% uh, of its uh, power. It's accelerating faster and faster uh, as it reaches up through the, the thinner, higher upper atmosphere. And about uh, the payloads are experiencing about three Gs on the flight at this moment in time. about a minute, 45 seconds of boost so far. Now the um, velocity meter, uh, <laughs> as you can see, is not correct. We're going much faster than 25 miles per hour. So ignore that. Uh, trust your eyes as you watch that vehicle fly. These, uh, these onboard views are very helpful to see, as you can see the, the earth descending away from the camera there. All right, we've hit Miko. Main engine cut off. Shortly here, we'll see separation. All right, that's the zero G indicator there means that we have uh, reached separation. 
of the two vehicles and now uh, the crew capsule and the booster are now coasting to their apogees uh, simultaneously. And you can see that clean separation now between those two vehicles, very, very pretty. That's a good clean view. The capsule at this point will begin its spin up for the payloads inside to experience not zero G today, <laughs> but lunar G. It's a little hard to see from this camera view, but we can't wait to see those results. Now the booster has begun its descent. You can see that booster is making, uh, there's a lot of separation there between the crew capsule, the top picture and the, and the booster down below. Uh, the data that you're seeing now is uh, needs to be refreshed on the screen, so apologies for that. But um, the booster is going to land about two miles north of the launch pad down in West Texas, right back at the launch site. And I'm hearing that the crew capsule is at full lunar G roll, so it has reached full energy, those payloads experiencing that, conducting their experiments, doing all the science that they've waited months and years for in some cases. That's right. Yes, we've been looking forward to this flight for a very long time. Now you notice the last time we tried to do this launch, there was a cloud cover. Today, there's no clouds, so our long-range cameras are able to clearly see the view all the way up to space uh, and track both vehicles together. And you can see that booster is descending. Now, it's at this point in time, it's re-encountering the atmosphere, uh, and it'll begin using its uh, its um, steering fins to be able to to guide it autonomously all the way back to the launch pad, or not the launch pad, but the landing pad, which is very, very much uh, nearby, about two miles north of the launch pad. At this point, the capsule has also reached, reached its apogee and uh, it is still spinning, but it will begin to um, slow down as it uh, and, and stop spinning as we re-enter the atmosphere here shortly. It's a very clean long shot from our, our long range camera on the ground in West Texas. Uh, now we're, we're uh, tracking the vehicles now. Uh, this camera here is looking at the booster as it's descending. You can see, um, you can see the, uh, those wedge fins have deployed off, the, uh, off of the top of the ring fin. And so it's able to steer its way back. And shortly here, we should see booster relight. All right, here's a nice side by side to see the uh, crew capsule on the left side and the booster on the right side of your screen as they're both descending. The booster is winning that race to the ground. It's nearing the ground right now. Those air brakes have deployed, which is really cutting the, the booster's velocity uh, down. Again, ignore the, the stats that you see on the screen. Those are not accurate. Today. All right, there's engine relight. And touchdown. All right. Love to see that a clean booster touchdown. Uh, and then here's the crew capsule. Yep, Still we got descending. eyes on the capsule. As you've noticed, it stopped. It's spinning. 
maneuver the payloads inside. Uh, we are re-entering the atmosphere. We've experienced up to five Gs on descent. We're awaiting uh, parachute deployment. Let's take a look. There's the drogue deployment. And there you see the main parachutes being pulled out by those drogues. Beautiful. Beautiful. We love to see it. Now, if you've got a keen eye, you might note the caps, the parachutes have a slightly new design. And you can see Let's one of those is lagging on its uh, inflation, but uh, that's all right. We have we've designed the system to have backups to the backups. Uh, this this system can safely land with fewer than three parachutes. So we're going to continue following this all as it approaches the West Texas desert, and it looks to me like the uh, stats that you're seeing on the screen are accurate there for the capsule descent. That's the correct, that's the correct expected uh, de um, descent speed for the capsule after the parachutes have deployed, right about 16 miles an hour. You can see this is a, a shot from one of our drones. You're seeing the, a little bit of a helicopter, <laughs> the blade of the, of the, of the drone there. Yeah, now as we descend uh, under parachutes, um, now they are essential for providing a gentle touchdown of our capsule. But like Joel said, uh, we've got many backup systems. Um, one of the nominal systems we use for touchdown is our uh, retro thrust system that might kick up a little bit of dust here. Let's take a look. And that third chute looks like it has now inflated, which is great. And touchdown. All right. Beautiful to touch, touch, touchdown of the capsule today on our 29th mission here. Incredible to see. Now our capsule recovery team is currently driving out in a convoy. They're gonna meet the capsule. They're gonna safe the vehicle and open the hatch and extract some of the payloads today. Well, that was a great day watching this new vehicle fly to space and, and back. Uh, not new vehicle, but this, this uh, new combination of our of our uh, payloads capsule along with our newest booster uh and let's not forget we want to see you know millions of people living and working in space in the future and so new shepherd is also even though we were watching a great payload flight happen today in front of our eyes uh, new shepherd is also de designed to take astronauts to space and so if you would like to purchase a seat uh, on a future ride to space just visit blueorigin.com and click the fly to space button your own journey to visit the Carmen line may be closer than you think. Yeah, and if you'd like to join our team and help us build a road to space, we've got hundreds of positions open across all of our manufacturing facilities from coast to coast, Florida, Alabama, West Texas, and Washington. Just visit us at blueorigin.com slash careers. And there's more. If you liked what you saw today, we have some great gear available, including a very cool uh, mission patch. Uh, there it is in the middle there. It's, uh, this one's a cool one. It features a crescent moon at the top, which it represents the, the lunar gravity that we're simulating today's, on today's flight uh, and that two minutes of, of lunar G spin. The, it's got a few hexagons in the background there. Of course, those represent our partners at, at the Honeybee team. And the crew capsule there is using its RCS system to spin up that lunar gravity. Yeah, and maybe my favorite feature of this patch, um, and really any patch, that, uh, I've never seen a patch like this, the street art style um, is our way to show off the modular vehicle liveries that we flew today between the booster and the capsule. Very creative. Well, hey, my name is Joel Eby, and for me and for Alice Watts here, and for the whole team at Blue Origin, thank you all for joining us today until our next launch. Gradatum for us at